What's up guys, today we're changing out the old rusty wheel hubs on my 2014 Silverado to these nice brand new ones from Kryptonite. So welcome back to the channel guys. We are again on my 2014 Silverado. And if you're first time tuning into the channel, thank you for joining us. We have a ton of content up on this truck, so be sure to check those videos out. But today we are gonna be upgrading the wheel hubs. We decided to go with Kryptonite wheel hubs. They have a lifetime warranty, which is fantastic. Um, so if you ever have an issue with these in the future, they will be covered. So that's pretty cool. Um, we also got new end caps. Now my truck actually doesn't have end caps from the factory. I got new bolts. The bolts are reusable, but I decided to replace them anyway. And a new axle nut. The axle nut does require replacement, so make sure you at least have one of these on hand. Here's one of the old ones that I got out already before we started filming. So I already did the passenger side. As you can see, this one is pretty corroded. Now my truck was starting to make some weird noises from the front end. I have 140,000 miles, give or take, on the truck. So I decided to upgrade the wheel hubs in case that is the source of the noise up front. If you wanna know what a wheel hub sounds like that is going really bad, Pete has a video up on his 2004 Silverado. I have a link to that above. And that is not a sound that you wanna hear. If you hear that sound, replace your wheel hubs immediately. Anytime you start hearing a sound from your wheel hubs or from your front wheels in general and you're at a higher mile, it's probably a good idea to change these out. We've all seen those videos where guys are going down the highway, especially with lifted trucks and big wheels, and the wheel takes off and the truck goes in a different direction, and that is usually because of a wheel hub failure. So make sure you replace your wheel hubs and torque your lug nuts, because that can also cause that to happen. All right, guys, let's get this started. Now, you do not need to do this job on a lift. You could definitely do it on the ground one side at a time. However, it's gonna make it a lot easier if you have the whole front end off the ground so that you can turn the steering wheel left and right to get better access to the bolts holding the wheel hub on. But to start, let's break these lugs Free, then we'll put it up and get the wheel off and get going. And I am running these fuel 18 inch wheels. We have a video up on the channel uh, with these Falcon Wild Peaks. I am at stock ride height. These do fit, they rub a little bit at full wheel lock, but I absolutely love these tires and the wheel setup. Very little road noise, which is something I was going for while still having a more aggressive tread. As always, when you're working on a vehicle, make sure you are supported with jack stands and never just use a jack to hold the vehicle up. As I mentioned earlier, my truck currently does not have a cap, but we will be adding this on after. Following the official instructions, you're gonna take a drift pin like this and we'll have one of these linked in the description. We'll also have all the parts and tools used in this video down in the description and it does really help us out when you go through these. But, Following the official instruction, you're gonna take this drift pin, stick it through your caliper, and lock it into that rotor so this will hold your axle in place while you remove this nut. It is a 35 millimeter nut. All right, now we're gonna heat it up a little bit with a torch just to make our lives a little bit easier. Now on the other side, I did not do this and it came right off with an impact, but it never hurts to add a little bit of heat to make your life a little bit easier. Whenever using heat, just make sure you're not heating up anything that could be damaged. So I'm gonna break this free by hand. You can completely remove it with impact, but I'm just gonna show you how this goes. So we're free. All right, now I'm gonna move it, remove it the rest of the way with the impact just to save ourselves a little bit of time. This is a good job to have earplugs on for, especially removing this. All right, there we go. And I'm actually gonna leave the nut on there so that as we're banging the hub off, it doesn't go flying off. I'm gonna remove the holding pin from the rotor. This is a T30. And if you wanna know how to upgrade the brakes or replace your pads and rotors, we have a whole video guide up on the channel showing how to do that. We'll have that linked above and in the description. Now we're gonna remove the caliper. It's held in by two 18 millimeter bolts, which I'm gonna break free first. And then remove with the impact. You'll wanna have a couple zip ties ready so that you can hold the caliper up. You never wanna have the caliper hang by your brake line. Mm -hmm. Now in hindsight, I would have gotten new uh, brake dust 
covers here, but I did not get them, so we will be reusing these rusty ones. This may be a little bit difficult to see on camera on the truck, so we're gonna show you here on the hub, there are three bolts that are gonna be holding it in place. They're all 15 millimeters, this is what they look like. Because the axle kind of gets in the way a little bit, I found the best combination that works here is a short uh, 3.8, 15 millimeter, immediately going into a short um, extension, and then I'm sizing up to the half inch to get a little more leverage, but you could use a long three inch breaker as well. And if you want to throw a little heat on these, you can. As you saw, that one broke free pretty easily with a nice long breaker bar, giving you a little bit extra leverage. Just be careful that you're not damaging the boot on your axle. And this is where having the whole front end off the ground really helps because we were able to turn the wheel to the left and have a lot more access to this third bolt. The awesome thing about the Kryptonite kit is it not only includes an entire new ABS line, it also includes all new clips. So we don't even need to worry about trying to salvage the OEM clips that go into the upper control arm here. So I'm just gonna take a pry tool and get those out. All right, and then the connection point is up top here. So you have to get this red tab to go backwards. It can be a little stuck with age. Once you have that red tab pushed into the release position, you're going to push down this black tab in the center there between the red tab and the body of the clip and pull that apart. And then there's one additional connection right here. And again, we don't need to salvage this clip. So we're just going to get that out of there. Now this is another good moment for earplugs. We are going to hit this off with a mallet. If you have an air hammer, you can use that as well. Now on Pete's truck, each one of these took him about eight to 10 minutes of beating off to remove. On the other side, it only took me about 30 seconds to a minute, but this is a 2014 versus a 2004. So 10 year newer truck, so 10 years less of corrosion on it. Um, so hopefully this side goes as easily as the other side. Make sure you wear some eye protection while you're doing this. Starting to have a little gap there, she's coming. You can start to see there's some silver showing through here. And as you can see, this is why it's a good idea to have the nut on the end because if it's just about to go and you give it go one good whack, it's gonna come fly off and land on your foot. All right, we got her. Still much easier than peach truck. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna undo the nut at this point. Now there is a washer in here, which you do need to reuse if you're not replacing. I'm just reusing the washer. All right. I'm just gonna clean this surface up a little bit. Get anything loose out of here. Just be careful of your axle while you're doing this. Especially the dust boot. You don't wanna puncture it with any of these little brushes. I'm just adding a little white lithium grease in here. Will it help if I ever have to change these again? Probably not, but it doesn't hurt to add a little bit here. It stays off corrosion for a little while. Now that they're all started, I'm just gonna snug them with the impact and then we're gonna to torque them down. Torque to spec. Reconnect your ABS sensor. This connection you really have to push in to make sure it fully clips. There we go. Now it is not necessary to reinstall this alignment screw, but as long as you put some anti-seize on there, like I just did, you usually aren't a pain to get out, usually. And again, this is a T30. And 
I always like to put a little bit of anti-seize on my caliper bolts. Just be careful because that can change the torque spec. Now we're going to drive the new nut on with the impact, again, 35 millimeters, and make sure your washer is on. Once this is touching, we're going to torque it down. We're pretty much there, so I'm going to switch over to the torque wrench. Got our drift pin back in place, and we're going to torque her down. Let's add the cap on top. All right, guys, so that is how you change the wheel hubs on your 2014 Silverado. This guide should apply to most trucks from my generation, and really, it's pretty much the same process on most GM vehicles and probably most trucks in general. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, parts are down in the description along with the tools that we used, and when you go through those links, it really does help us out, so we really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you back next time.